the people's house. But what else would you expect? After all, that's the Chicago way. And joining me with reaction is Republican strategist Mercedes Vienna Schlapp and Democratic strategist Michael Brown is back with us. Ah, lobbyist, no, Mercedes, no problem. You know, if um, fat cat Wall Street guy, no problem. What, is, what does a promise mean after all? Well, exactly. I mean, look, he's desperate. He knows he's in trouble. He's bringing in uh, William Daly to try to save the day. However, as we know clearly, at the end of the day, the one who sets the agenda is going to be the president. And the question is going to be if he's even going to listen uh, to William Daly uh, in, in, in the next coming years, you know. And as we know, it's kind of sad that he has had to make such changes so dramatically because of the the fact that he's had so many problems with, um, you know, with uh, having this extreme agenda in his first two years. You know, my, Michael, let me, because I, I view you as an honest guy. The president promised 8 percent unemployment if we passed the stimulus. Didn't work out. He also promised uh, we wouldn't have these record deficits. Didn't keep that promise. Promised that he'd eliminate the Bush tax cuts for the so-called wealthy liberals like yourself. Um, he said, you know, no lobbyists, no fat cats. Do, do these broken promises bother you as a liberal? Well, first of all, I don't, I don't see them, Sean, as uh, and Happy New Year, by the way, to you, Sean. I don't. You're I don't being see nice them to me. You're ruining the promises. show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see them as as broken promises, Sean. As much as I do as a president that inherited a mess and oh. had to come in and try to fix it, and he's trying to fix it, and some of the things are just not working as quickly as any of us would like, but they are working. We're moving in the right direction now economically as a country, uh, and obviously we all wish things could have um, been fixed overnight, but that's not the case. That's not how our uh, economic system works, uh, but we are moving in the right direction. You know, what if Mercedes does it mean to you the Chicago way? You know, I'm looking, for example, at the Illinois legislature. They've got billions of dollars in deficits. They may even be headed towards bankruptcy with states like New York and California. And I have here in front of me Illinois lawmakers proposing a 75 percent income tax hike. That's right. And at really, the Chicago way it means that the government way, meaning more government, meaning more taxes, and that's their solution of how they're going to solve the economic crisis. And as we know, that's not going to work. And the president had to really budge and, and give in on his promise of the tax, on the tax cuts and had to negotiate with Republicans. And he knows he's, you know, it's checkmate. He's in a, he's desperate. He needed to make some changes. And, and in essence, he had to go back with his Chicago buddies uh, to really try to see if he can make a change in the White House. But at the end of the day, we have to see if this change is really going to affect President Obama. As we know, when Rahm Emanuel was there, he wanted incremental changes to the Obamacare, and President Obama didn't listen. So I think at the end of the day, the policy, you know, ends up in the hands of the president, and he makes that final de decision and drives the agenda. And I think you're going to see that although, you know, they're bringing in the Clintonites to come in and, and recycle these policy advisors, uh, I don't think you're going to see much of a change. You in know, fact, I think we're going to see a lot of friction in the White House. You know, it's interesting you say that. And I actually made the same comment on radio today, because it's not the chief of staff who determines the course of an administration. administration it's the president. That's, that's his right. job. That's, that's what he's in charge of. You know, Michael, I, I've got to deal with this obsession that everybody on the left, including yourself, have, and that's blame Bush, blame Bush, inherited, inherited, inherited. You know, Michael, these are his policies. You know, since when Nancy Pelosi was speaker, $5.2 trillion in new debt, $3.2 trillion for Barack Obama. We've never had a president accumulate this much debt in this short a period of time than this president. He would now, seven months ago, our debt was $13 trillion. My question to you is simple. When do you stop blaming Bush? Well, first, I want to commend um, the president for picking Bill Daly. I don't think he could have picked Forget a better that. person. I didn't ask you that. Uh, at this time, I know, I know, but I wanted to make sure I chimed in on uh, Secretary Daly. Uh, he's a, straight, a smart man and I think the right man for the job at the right time. Uh, what you're talking about, though, um, Sean, about all the different deficit numbers you've thrown out, all the different statistics, the kind of hole that President Bush dug was oh. a deep one. And so because of that, I know you, you like to breathe hard when you hear this, but these are the facts. And because of that, President Obama did have to do some things to make sure, I guess the old adage, we had to spend some money to get out of that hole that he created, to get job you know. creation going, get businesses to hire, make sure small businesses uh, still had a seat at the table. And it's, and frankly, Sean, it is working. Yes, some of the numbers it, you just mentioned, but keep in mind, there's a whole lot of debt on the other side. Remember, the Republicans did a whole lot of spending you, in the Bush you, years. You, you, you know, uh, so, and you so know we're, we're also paying those bills, the, the too. Pro the problem is, that, and, and the Republicans paid a price in 2006, Mercedes. 
They, they were right. thrown out because of spending. As That's bad right. as that was, the Democrats, under Barack Obama, quadrupled it. And uh, it's now getting to the point, you know, when do they take responsibility? When do they stop this obsession of blaming Bush? When does the president put his ha uh, pants on, sit at the table, and take responsibility? I am tired yeah. of this mantra. You know, well, George... Go ahead. And the promises that uh, President Obama has made that when he was going to spend the stimulus money of $800 billion that was going to create these jobs, I mean, we're still waiting for these jobs to really happen and really have the job market going. And so, in essence, I don't think what we have seen is in these past two years, not only the reckless spending, which, yes, the Republicans have had their—they've had problems with this reckless spending, and they've got to get it under control, uh, but also with now, with Obamacare passed, uh, we, we've got serious issues. I mean, this is really going to cause a lot more economic problems that, that, that we can handle. I mean, you know, the housing market isn't bouncing back, and uh, as, as we can see, and the, job, and the job market. I mean, you're still talking that you have millions of people out of jobs. Well, the, the, the biggest, the, 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 as, the, as, quote, the good news unemployment went down, the more deceptive side of this is there are far more people now that are no longer counted, including almost 600,000 this month, that are off the rolls, that we don't count anymore, which makes the real unemployment number in this country 17 percent. Michael Brown, the president said he was going to fix that. It hasn't been fixed. You, you keep touting the success. What success? Well, the, the term success is defined as moving in the right direction relative to being in a recession. And I'm sorry to tell you again that President Bush started. So because of that, we're trying to fix as he's trying to fix that, it's going to take some time. Now, some experts have also said, Sean, that some of our some of corporate America was too big and bloated. And obviously the recession made a lot of folks do a lot of layoffs. And some corporate American experts say there will never be as big as it was. So we have to find new job markets for folks that have been hired before to get them hired again. Right, well, and when you have when you have a high capital gains tax, and when you investors are scared, you know that's why jobs are going, uh, you know, out of the U.S. And it's it's really going to be interesting to see what type of investment is going to occur in the U.S. when we have such high capital gains tax, and really um, right. a, a president and administration that's been very anti-business for the most part. All right, we're going to run, but Michael, the day that you you say it's okay that you're going to stop blaming Bush, come on the program. I'll, I'll give you a whole half hour. Just to just to say, it's now all by yourself. You sit here with me for a half hour. If you the day you get over your obsession, Bush, Bush, it's not an Barack obsession, Obama, Sean. It's fact. Bush is it's gone fact. two years now, and the country was yeah, far but his, better but off he was when in he was office president. For, he was in, but he was in office for eight years and created the problem. You expect it to be fixed in two? You know, George Bush inherited a recession. You didn't hear him whining. Bill Clinton left me a recession every five seconds. A recession. But I got he, run. he inherited. He inherited, he inherited an unbelievable government a recession, and surpluses. And he inherited weak national security. And he inherited the negative impact of 9/11. But I'm not and arguing. Surplus and surpluses. Well, it, it, I, it's I got a new. Run, it's a new year. It's a new year. So let's start fresh and let's keep moving on. Yeah, it's time for the president to man up. And coming up earlier today, the House cleared the way for.